Hello everybody, this is Havoc back with another Total War 3 Kingdoms Guide. Today will be a two video mini series on population and public order. Public order is about 90% tied to population, so it's important to understand just how your population works in general for your campaign, but also to get an idea on when, where, or how fast your public order issues will arise and just what your public order solutions are. As always, let's dive in. Population is the collective group of people that make up your entire commandery. As you'll notice in the Hyundai commandery, my regional city has a population of 1.1 million and my farmland has 300,000, making a total of 1.4 million, which can be found at the bottom left of the UI screen for the commandery. You can also quickly reference populations and growth of all your commanderies by accessing the commanderies tab on the bottom right side of the UI panel. Your population serves some very positive benefits as it increases. Financially, it will provide you with a peasantry income bonus, provided that you have buildings in your commandery that give you any peasantry income in the first place. That bonus at the highest level will increase your peasantry income by 350%, though you'll probably never get to that point, and I'll discuss why in the public order video. Second is military, with a replenishment bonus of up to 25%. This again might not seem like much, but in the mid to late game, that can give your post-battle armies dozens more men per turn than areas without that bonus. Lastly from the positives, a high population can reduce the time it takes to construct settlement advent buildings. These tend to take some of the longest in your commandery, though personally I would prefer an overall building reduction time instead of limiting it just to advent buildings. To wrap this segment up, the unfortunate side effect of a higher population is public disorder which can hit you with up to minus 30 at its max, a truly massive amount that takes a long time to fight off. Again, I'll address this aspect in the public order video. Now that we've established what your population does, let's go over its limits and growth. Your population limit is directly tied to the level of your main settlement administration building, plus the population max of your other regions. For instance, let's take a look at Amping. At a level 4 settlement, the small city has a max population of 800,000. The nearby farmland has a max of 500,000. Combined, you have 1.3 million, which is the maximum population this commandery can ever reach until you upgrade your regional admin building. There are several ways to increase your population. The first we look at are the buildings, also known as infrastructure in your factors panel. The labor chain can bring in upwards of 80 to 100,000 people per turn, depending on which side of the split you choose to follow. Land development in the agricultural chain will provide you with upwards of 24,000 per turn, but offers a wide variety of either food production or food consumption in exchange for increased peasantry income. Next up are reforms. There are three reforms that directly boost population growth across your faction. Two are located in the agricultural section with resettlement incentives and sharecropping, with a hidden jewel in the industrial section way up top with horse magnates. Seeking out these reforms is a great way to ensure that even your most recently conquered regions will see some immediate boost to population growth, in turn giving immediate potential boost to income and replenishment. Administrators are another great way to boost your population. Most if not all administrators provide some degree of population growth. While this trait is generally lower on my priority list of administrator effects, it is still something I look for when I'm pointing that court position as any population growth is better than nothing, and I do tend to place those higher pop growth administrators in my food commanderies as they'll typically generate more peasantry income. Assignments, high public order, and followers are of course some other simple ways to boost your population growth. I do believe there are at least a few different types of followers with this effect. High public order gives a small maximum of the pop per turn, and it is important to remember that your assignments are temporary, so you'll need to reinstate them once their time is finished in that particular commandery. Now that we have our section for population generation out of the way, let's briefly look at a few ways that your population can decrease. Heading back to buildings, the conscription chain looks to be the only chain of the non-faction specific buildings that cost you in population per turn. The benefits from this chain could very easily be worth the decrease in pop growth, and it is also easy counterbalanced with even one of the pop growth chains in the aforementioned section. Another way is from negative public order. Having a commandery with deep enough negative public order and you will start to lose a ton of population. While not confirmed, I believe that this is a migration mechanic and the population is simply leaving to the surrounding commanderies, not dying as I have implied in other videos. 
One way to completely decimate your population base is when your commandery runs out of reserves. In this scenario, I have purposefully starved my people just to show how devastating running out of reserves can be, losing up to 120,000 people per turn as long as I'm out. Reserves are important to hold out against sieges anyways, and yet this is another reason why you should take your reserves seriously in your campaign. Lastly, enemy forces inside your commanderies do give you a double punch in negative public order and pop growth. I rather like this since we don't have a raid stance aside from Gong Du. It implies that just by being in your territory, they're raiding and killing your population, or that your population is in fear for their lives and is migrating out of said commandery. And that is it for this video on population. Understanding what your population can do in Three Kingdoms and how it's either generated or lost can be useful in your campaign. At a minimum, it can provide you with explanations why your armies are replenishing so fast, why your income might be decreasing every turn, but you can't figure out why, or even why you're seeing public order plummeting, as we'll cover in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video and got something new out of it. Be sure to let the community know of other ways to affect your population in the comment section down below. You guys have been very helpful in filling in the cracks that I've missed and it's greatly appreciated. Do make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe to the channel. Check out my Patreon as supporters of the $2 level and above get to vote now on what video I should cover next for Thursday, July 11th. Stick around the channel today as my public order video will be going up the second half. This is Havoc and I'll see you guys in the next one.